all right y'all thank y'all for tuning in once again as always be sure to like share comment subscribe hit the notification bell so every time i drop a video you will be the first to know about it so today we're going to touch on the the baby massacre down there in was it Valde, Texas? By this 18 year old, I don't know, they won't call me a loner, strange, weirdo. I don't know, you can you can give them a bunch of names, but you know, a lot of times this stuff, it's really not necessary. I know it's uh it's really used to invent frustration, and we all got frustrations. We all are frustrated about it, about it, you know, undoubtedly. So we all gotta, you know, cope with it, deal with it the best way we are, that we know how. But today I want to touch on some points because <clears throat> look at this one, look at this incident. You look at the one from last week with the guy up in Buffalo. I can't forget about the one at the church uh, last week too and so on and so on and so forth and all the rest of them that have happened that probably ain't got the notoriety you know like the the ones that happened in you know the black community and it's just a small print in the newspaper when all these young brothers and sisters get shot killed murdered what have you in their own little neighborhood it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter who, who does it I mean it's it's a tragic it's tragic in a way because kids are not supposed to be killed they die they're not supposed to die before their parents it's just it's just unnatural you know it's not, it's not the natural order of things you're supposed to, you know it's just not but what I like to do well not what I like to do but what I find myself doing in, in any situation whether it's good or bad I always want to find like the root cause or the real reason why things happen the way they do. Like I say, it can be good. Like if somebody, somebody's business, somebody starts a business, you know, uh, shout out to, what's that name? Uh, the, the, the slutty vegan I was reading a story about her and she had like a food truck in 2019, I believe, or a few years ago. And now business is like valued at like a hundred million dollars and she got, you know, throwing up shops all over the country now you know stuff like that you want to know how she did it uh don't want to see these these little infomercials or these videos or these you know these youtube ads saying man i earned a hundred thousand dollars i earned no i earned six figures a month doing this with my business and i want to teach you too just click on the link you know and all that kind of mess i don't want that book i want to know a real story I want to say real business out there and see real stories. And then too, bad stuff too. It's like I say with these, like I said, these incidents, these three incidents that have happened over the past two weeks. You know, the, the, the question is going to always be why? And I guess it comes from going to school and having to learn how to critically think things, change your mindset to figure out problems and to come up with the answer not just reading answer question reading answer question you actually have to figure out how to answer questions and i had instructors who told me you ask why till you can't ask why no more and there are instances where people do things and you can't ask them why no more and uh i come to that conclusion you know many times with people family friends or whatever they do things you try to help, you try to figure out, you try to rationalize or come up with a logical solution as to why people do things and then you finally just say to yourself, the hell with it, can't figure them out. So now, just be like, that's who they are. So now, you just have to deal, now you gotta figure out how to live your life accordingly. Adjust your life accordingly because these people, this is how, these are the people, these, this is who these people are, right? So, but we're talking about individual situations. Like, like I say, we can sit there and say, we can find out why, and then kind of figure out that they're going to do what they do anyway. So it really doesn't, you know, so 
they're pr probably pretty much a lost cause, but let's still get to the root problem because maybe it could help someone else. It may not could help that person. That person may be, that be, I don't want to say tossed through the wayside, but you just can't focus on them as much as you did in the beginning. Now, you know, things are different. So this is no different. And to get to the point, man, I uh, read a couple of articles from the Daily Mail. Like I said, y'all know I like to read the Daily Mail. But on my side, sitting in my truck, weather beautiful, 70, 72 degrees. Got the windows down, just got off, you know, just got off work. And so I just, this this is something I just felt I had to talk about. Couldn't, couldn't ignore this. So anyway, like I said, I read a couple of Daily Mail articles. Like every time you click on it up and refresh, there's new information coming popping up on the website but what i wanted to do is pretty much and i wrote a lot of notes down so we're gonna get to that but because i kind of want to just go out the dome on this uh, I, I wanted to like touch on and try to come to an understanding of just why you know we can cry march we can demand the government passed these gun laws, and we we'll get into that later. And we can talk about all this bull corn that we know is not going to work because it ain't worked till this point. So that means something different has got to be done. So which means is they need to. One of the things I think to be done is there needs to be a public demand for studies, not on reparations, not, not on stuff like that, because there don't need to be no study reparations on that because. We can figure that out real quick. I'm talking about stuff like this. Study, understand, and then making sure that the information gets out to the public, whether it's right or wrong, whether you like it or not, the information has to get out to the public. Like, take for instance, what was it last week? It was uh, a young girl was found in Arlington, but but at a Mavericks, but you know, but uh, but rewind, she was supposedly kidnapped from a Dallas Mavericks basketball game she was there with her dad she went to the restroom never came back now they say she was kidnapped for sex trafficking they showed they they show like surveillance video somewhere where she was walking with like three guys or what have you but it's like no real deep dive into how did she end up like i say how did in the heck did she you know they found her last week you know, say she was sex, tra sex trafficked. She walked into the police station in Arlington. And then like eight people from Oklahoma City were arrested, you know, behind it. But my question is, you know, how in the heck did you end up being taken from a venue in an event that was that full and that crowd and full of people? How did that happen? And no, I'm not sitting here trying to, I'm not, I'm not about to victim blame or whatever. But the question is, like I said, I want to know when they ask her the question, I want to know what the answers are. Then get down to the truth. They got, if they got an interrogator, interrogator or whatever, I mean, so be it. But when those answers are divulged, it needs to be put out to the public on every news outlet, every internet outlet, what have you, every school should get it, every parent, Everybody should know because that's something that's strange. I mean, that's strange to me because my thinking is, like I said, think, trying to think logically and critically think. You know, I try to tell my daughters and any other girl that she does too. Man, if somebody tries to snatch you, especially from a crowded place, should you run? You run, you holler, you do whatever. You know what I'm saying? You do, if somebody try to kidnap you in the car, you know, you don't take off, you know what I'm saying? You, you wreck the car, like they said, you know, you throw that sun gun to the building, whatever, because, or hell, even if they jump into the driver's seat and throw you in the passenger seat and they take off driving. That ground is hard. Trust me, I'm sure it is. But it, it's better to jump out that car, take your chances. Some, who knows, some tragic may happen, but it's better to take your chances with witnesses than to be taken somewhere things done to you and no one ever finds you you got to increase you got to increase your chances of 
survival. So like I said, so like I said, I want to know exactly how this young lady get taken from the American Airlines Center or Arena, no, the AAC, American Airlines Center, end up being sex trafficked. I mean, just ask a logical question. Did she have a part of it? Because you know they have online predators. I mean, it was another case years ago where a lady girl was down here in this area too, and her, her mama was getting into it. Which is a lot of this stuff. That's where a lot of this stuff stems from. It stems from relationships between the parents and the child, and how the child views the relationship, whether good or bad, right or wrong. How they feel it is going, how they feel it should be going, and a lot of times these teenagers, these junior high folk, man, they're getting into them years, and it's like they're trying to find themselves, and they, you know, trying to check themselves, and. You know, they don't know what to do and they need proper instruction because not, man, they're going to turn. They become they can become wayward real quick without proper instruction and discipline at that age. Well, they should get it their whole life, though. But you shouldn't wait till they teenagers because once they get into junior high, shit, it's almost over. Right. But like I'm saying, I mean, like I say the girl, she heard her mom and got into it. We're getting into it a lot. She was like, she was like, you know. Get y'all with truancy, all this kind of stuff. And my heart, they got into it one more time and she left, met this chick online. That was her friend. She said, told her she could meet this hotel, met at the hotel. The girl said, as soon as she opened the door and she walked in, closed the door, dude standing right there. Next thing she knows, she out cold, dude knocked out. And they started sex trafficking all across the country until they finally found her back during the Super Bowl in Dallas, in Irving. And that's how, was, you know what I'm saying? And they trace it and somehow they was able to find her during that time. But again, like I say, it's not, it's not, like I say, you're not trying to blame the victim. You're trying to figure out what did she do? How did she mess up? Because kids do dumb stuff. I mean, period. You're going to beat them down. You say, okay, look. Okay, just tell us what happened. You tell us what happened. Cool. Now we can go tell other kids so it won't happen to them. Simple as that. You know, nothing more, nothing less. But anyway. Like I said, got my little notes here. We're gonna go through some bullet points on this story, and we're just gonna just gonna discuss, player. So, the guy's name was Salvador Ramos. He was 18 years old. So he killed 19 children, two adults. I know when I first heard the, heard that, I said 19 kids. That's a lot. Why didn't he even kill? I'm thinking, you know, why did he even shoot more or less? Why well, was you know 19 and two? And I said they must all been in the same classroom. That's the first thing that came to my my thought process. But they was all in the same class, and he just mowed these little babies down in an adult. And this happened at a uh, Rob Elementary, like I say, in Uvalde, Texas. Now, they say the bro, they say the dude was bullied. His friends, some of his former friends, saying that let's see, he was from North Dakota. They moved, his family moved to Texas. They say he was bullied a lot, especially like in junior, well, in junior high, due to they say he bullied bad in junior high due to like a list. And he has uh, what he had studied, and I guess his family was poor because they say they dogged him about his clothes, his appearance, and the way he talked, you know, and stuff like that. And they also said he was a violent kid. He liked to fight, you know. He he got into a lot of fights in high school. You know, liked to fight his uh, mom's boyfriend. He said that. The boy had like a punching bag in his room. And he liked to you know, box and practice a lot. You know, I say one of the issues that we have with kids is that there are a lot of programs. And no, I can recall when they started taking out these programs in school. Why is that the school programs have been taken out of these public schools? These pitiful public schools. So these kids have nothing to do. Except go home and play Call of Duty all day, every day. They don't have an outlet. I remember being a kid and, you know, signing up for Taekwondo classes or whatever. I remember being a kid and, you know, and we could talk about junior high, high school too. When you get upset, you know, my mom would like to, let's say me and my mom again too, because like I say, junior high, high school, you're trying to feel yourself. So you're going to clash with your parents every now and then. You know, go outside. You know, hit the weight bench, go to school, hit the weight bench, go play basketball, you know, do something, you know, hit the punching bag. You had an outlet, you know what I'm saying? Join an organization, go to work, do something. 
But you know, you had a like a pro, but we're talking about younger kids. They have to have an outlet, you know, sports, join the club, anything, anything to work because to work kids can feel like part of a group. If you leave a child isolated, man, that's a that's a bad combination because you don't know that dude is probably more like a, a percentage that went higher that is going to hurt harm himself or harm some other people. And I think the problem a lot of these parents don't understand is time goes by real fast. Today, your child can be four or five years old and you just think he's bad, just want to whoop him, punch him, whatever the case may be. Don't let him go out. You know, he don't have no friends. He got issues. Six, seven, he don't join no nothing. You don't let him, no, he don't join like no soccer club. No football or basketball, t ball, nothing, no boxing, no martial, mixed martial arts, nothing. Just sit in his room all day, sit in that room, kids do sit in the room all day, do nothing. But next thing you know, they're in high school doing the same thing. And they ain't, like I say, don't have no social skills, can't talk to people, so you wonder why they stutter, got a speech impediment, stuff like that. And they get bullied, but they have no one to turn to. Now, this guy, let's say he had like a friend. One of his best friends said, you know, he was a shy dude, quiet in junior high, but things changed once his best friend moved away from the area. So now the dude had a friend that that's why you need to understand, like you need to figure out like who your kids hang around, what kind of friends they have, because this guy seemed like probably was a cool dude with him. But once his friend left, now your child has no more doesn't have another no one to turn to because of the relationship that it said he had with his mom, which we'll get into here in a second. So now your friend had moved, now the child's friend had moved, now they had no one to turn to, now what is he gonna do? Like I say, play video games. They said that dude should get bullied on the video game with his, with his lisp and his uh, stuttering. So you know he, man, that boy had, he had a bad, out. No, he couldn't, he had no escape. No escape nowhere. Okay, so then they say, uh, like, um, I want to say my question. I say, why you kill babies? You talk about people in junior high teasing you, people at the high school teasing you. They say you dropped out of school because it was teased so much and had fights so much to where this is the year he supposed to graduate and he didn't graduate. And so they say he was upset about it. But his friends, his classmates graduated like a day before this happened. So you got all these people, like say in high school, like you know your peers, classmates, or whoever. They bullying you, but you go out to fourth graders. Now, I do believe reading, you know what I'm saying, keep, you know, some stuff keep coming up, reading all the facts and the evidence that they bringing up. I do believe, I don't think it was planned for him to go to the elementary school. And I say, and, I, and this is why I say that, because Let's say him and his grandmother got into it. He was living with his grandma. Now let's rewind. Let's say he was living with his mom. So him and his mom, they say they used to get into it where they yell out, have arguments so much that the police had to be called. His mom lived on one side of town. His grandma lived on the other side of town. Every time he get in a fight with his mom, he would go stay with his grandmother for a few days and go back. But they said this time he stayed with his grandma. He, he had been there for months. But I believe that's because, as they say, his mom had drug, had drug issues. As a matter of fact, the grandmother was going to evict the mom out of the other house. So the grandmother owned her own house and the house down the street. And was going to evict the mom because of, because of the mom's drug use. Now that goes to the point of a video I had before about you can't, you got to be careful who you help, whether it's family or not, family or friends or not, because a lot of times grandma helps the wrong person. It's not really the dad all the time. You know, grandma, now dad will let you linger around, do whatever you need to do, you know, say you got to work, blah, blah, blah. Mama give you the whole world, give you everything, and you ain't done nothing to deserve it. You know, so like she's helping her daughter who, as the article says, she's probably a drug, she was a drug that had drug issues, and mom's going to put out. You know, and those users are the ones that the mom, the grandma helps. 
you know, they want to give them the, the house that they grew up in. Want to give them furniture, give them a car, this and that there, because they hard and they look, you know, single parent, got kids, you know, doing, trying to do it on their own, ain't getting no help, got drug issues or whatever. Hey, I'm going to do this for you. You're not doing all the kinds of your heart. There ain't nothing wrong with that. Uh, I'm trying to, I'm going to help you, you know, so help my child, help, you know, help my, whoever, help my relative, because they need my help, my grandbaby, whatever, need help. But then you just kind of realize that they don't appreciate it. But you gotta think about it. If they didn't take care of their own stuff at first, why do you think they're gonna take care of your stuff? It just it, it, it just doesn't happen. It rarely happens. Now some people have bad breaks. You make mistakes, you have bad breaks, and you're really trying to do better. You're actually putting in work to do better on a consistent basis, and it's just hard for you. You know what I'm saying? Hey, by all means, you help that person. But if somebody ain't doing right, you helping them is not going to help. All you're going to do is enable them to keep doing what they've been doing. What they say, I'm just saying, may not got nothing to do with this story, but it's, they say you you pay for what you want and you beg for what you need. Those type of people can't help. Them. But anyway, back to the, you know what I'm saying? Back, now fast forward. To the morning, anyway, him and his grandmother got into it to the so, so quote unquote quote bad. Now, one story said it was over a cell phone bill. Another one was over because he didn't graduate high school and they going back and forth and he shot his grandmother. Grandma run down the street telling everybody, telling people, you know, I got shot. He shot me. He shot me. He jumps in his truck, takes off. They say he speeds down the street. So he speeds down the street and he crashes his truck. Coincidentally, right next to the, right next to the elementary school. So this dude, because he was what, five miles, I think he was five miles from the high school, something like that, but the school was like right up the street. I, I, I can't remember. But anyway, they say he crashed his, what the story goes, he crashed his truck right next to the elementary school. So he gets out with the rifle, one of the guns he had, and goes to the elementary school. And and that's when he starts shooting. Now you got people that say, hey, why the school ain't locked? You know, it's hard to get into these schools. How you, how do people how do kids get into these schools and shooting these schools? Let me tell you something. <clears throat> yeah, you go to school that you know you open the first door, you ring the bell, you gotta tell them who you are. They gotta let they let you in, okay? Let me tell you something. If if dude walks in with a gun, handgun, high powered rifle, whatever the case may be, I don't care. Unless you got police standing at the door. I don't care what you do. You're not gonna stop. You can't. You're not gonna stop that guy from getting in. Because number one, it's too many windows. That's the first thing. Number two, like I so said, you can knock on the door. And say, hey, this is so and so. I want to come and get my brother out of school. I need to talk to uh, a teacher. Talk to the principal about what's going on with my son or daughter. And they be like, okay, bring you in. Well, somebody will come get you, or bring you in and come to the office. Once that front door is open, it's open. Once, once that front door is open, and they uh, hold on, sorry about that, spam. But anyway, once that front door is open, it's you know what I'm saying all bets off. You can't stop the dude. No matter you know you see no matter what. Now they said he was walking with the gun and was shooting and shooting. Like I said, you're not gonna stop it because once he break one of the windows, out, he can run through it and that's it. So like, but I'm sure more hopefully. Hopefully the entire story comes out to where everybody can see exactly what happened. But like I said, from what I'm seeing, I don't think he was going to shoot. I don't think he was going to do this at the elementary school. Like I said, he wrecked out and just, unfortunately, he was right there at the school. I think he was, no, because they say class graduate, he might've was going to go to the school, to the, uh, to the high school. Cause graduation happened, but that don't mean school was out, right? Like you can have senior graduation, but everybody's still going to school. So I think what my my daughter graduated like next Wednesday or something like that. You know, some of the kids still in school, but I don't know, I don't know how it go. But like I said, I'm just saying it's quite possible that, that that he was not going. I'm just saying it's possibility. You know, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. All right, what else? Uh, like I said, say mama, like so, like I said, back to his mom. His mom was on drugs. So when I say 
why like some you ask the question like why would somebody do this this guy's instance here not justifying it but again it's not about justifying it's about okay let's just really see what the trigger this guy maybe we can do something to try to help it not happen again because you can sit here and say man we're not gonna get as many excuses you know what i'm saying okay i know people who grew up parents on drugs and they became doctors lawyers and all that kind of stuff okay that's fine that's fine but you but you got some who grew up in poverty who grew up with a drug you know with a drug as a mama parent or whatever and they do bad stuff it happens everybody is not everybody's mentality is not the same in the same situation period you can have kids that grow up in a two-parent household seem like everything is perfect and that kid can still do something throw it off go wayward end up in prison it happens but the odds are it'll happen less in that environment than the weird than it would if he's in a, an environment where like a single parent parent works all day works all night or parents on drugs or living in poverty and all they can look up to are rappers or drug dealers or drug addicts or whatever the case may be. So, like I said, you don't, you can't say that a situation is gonna work all the time, but like I said, you want to just increase your chances of a positive outcome. You see what I'm saying? So like I said, she was in drugs. They said the dad lived in the area too, and he had a long criminal history. I say both parents had a criminal history. They back to like 2000 or something. The dad's more longer than the mom from what they from what they was talking about. Like the dad had a whole bunch of misdemeanors, which is crazy. But they didn't know what the misdemeanors were. But the mom, they said she had a theft of less than $500. They had that. They knew what that was. But the dad they didn't know what he did. They just know he just went to jail a whole bunch of times. You no know, had a misdemeanor charge a bunch of times and got up and did a few 180 days here, 90 days here, 30 days here. You know, instead of just saying, man, you know, I'm trying to put you in for like some years and put you some, instead of putting them in rehab, you see what I'm saying? Stuff like that. Like I say, there's things that you need to really protest about. Like, create more, like I say, forget this other stuff you're talking about. For, you know, like your Black Lives Matter money that can't nobody find, but come to find that they're using it for all these other, these, these houses and parties and stuff like that and these art museums. You can, uh, like I said, use that money to open up rehab places. You know what I'm saying? Uh, psych places where people can get like psych, psych help. You know, you know. So that's stuff you protest for to help people in certain situations. Create programs to where these kids can have an escape from home, so they can have some kind of role model or, or, or believe that they can, you know, they can do something else besides following their parents' footsteps. You know what I'm saying? So that's uh you do stuff like that, not just sit in protest and say, let's get rid of the guns. Cause if you want to fix that problem, Chris Rock told you do that, told you years ago on one of his stand-ups. You gotta get rid of the guns. You ain't gotta take nobody guns. Just increase the price of bullets. You know, increase the price of bullets. You make the bullets so expensive to where people, the only a certain amount of people can get it. And then too, you make it to where even people who want to put bullets together, that the, that 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 the that the ingredients and all the stuff you need to put to create to make bullets, that stuff got to be expensive too. Man, you got no y'all got no problem raising gas prices to astronomical prices, food prices are out of this world, housing prices don't went up. Can't do the same for bullets, cigarettes. You even let cigarettes go up sometimes, you know. People still buying, but you can't raise the price of bullets to where only like a few people can buy it. I mean, that's your that's your best, you know, tax it, and that's your best. That that that's the most, that's the easiest, what they call it, the the, the least invasive way to help curb the problem. It's not gonna nothing's gonna curb things a hundred percent, but you gotta try to do the least invasive to get the best outcome. You learn that in nursing school. I said the dude worked at Wendy's, worked five hours a day, five days a week. So the dude made money. People acting like, man, how he buy these guns on Wendy's salaries? Probably making seven, seven, seven twenty-five, seven fifty hours. 
if you work five days a week, 30 hours a day, ain't a whole lot. I said two, I mean, 30 hours a week. What's that? Five, what's that? Six, seven, seven and five is 35. Sometimes five is 35, right? So 350 dollars a week taxes. Ah, he might clear a good 300 because he ain't claiming nobody, but he's still, you know, young enough to stay home. So, so maybe $300 a week. Nah, yeah. You know, no, no, no. That's right. Yeah, yeah. No, 30, 30 times seven. No, 21. I'm sorry. Good luck. Three and seven is 21. So 200, two, don't say 200, about $190 a week. You work every day. You talking eight, maybe it's six, seven hundred dollars a month, which ain't a lot. But again, look where you live at. Saving all your money all month. You know, you just, you saving his money. You can buy them weapons. They say, you know, the weapons cost fifteen hundred dollars here, eight hundred dollars there. What is he buying? You know what I'm saying? I mean, what is he buying? Now, for me, I probably get a part time job because I got a whole bunch of other stuff I'm buying. But you know, because I got bills and stuff like that. But he's sitting at home, so come on, huh? Anyway, uh, Like I say, he like to fight a lot. He said, like, I live in the area. Oh, they also say he would rude the girl. That's another thing. A boy that's rude the girl. And that's enough. And I'm going to end on that. Oh. Uh, the relationship with his mother. His kids. The relationship these kids have with their parents. Plays a big part in how they act in society. He had a tumultuous relationship with his mom, as they say. He fought, he fought all the time, been fighting for years. Police had to be called. They say he called her the B word probably all the time. Probably wasn't the first time. You know what I'm saying? It was even like one was even one of the altercations was posted online. People don't realize, like I said, your relationship with your child dictates how your child is going to be with other people growing up. Well, you see the stories of these guys. We've been watching a few of these dang documentaries on ID channel. Where these dudes are like strangling these women, raping and strangling these women, these guys. And when you look, when they talk about their childhood, a lot of them were abused by the mother. Probably abandoned by the dad. And the mom is abusing them. Mom is on drugs, alcoholic abusing the boy, whether it's beating him or even sexually. And then they get out to the world and these guys hate women. Got animosity towards women. And they go out and take it out on them. And again, the first thing we want to do is say, all oh, these guys are crazy, they sick, and they need to be taken off the street. Well, that's true. But let's see what caused him to turn that way? What what could have played a part in the creating this monster? Because he is a monster. And unfortunately, he got a raw, the raw end of the deal. And it's sad and it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. That guy, we can't help. But somebody else in the future, we can. We can realize that we need to create more parenting programs for especially for people you know you got these programs where you give them food stamps you get the kids medicaid you know now i don't know if it's statewide but i know in texas now you got to have a job you got to be for a certain amount of time and show pay stubs to get you know for certain programs to get the food stamps and medicaid get all the government assistance which is sh what you should uh, you gotta just, especially if you're able bodied, you just gotta show that your buddies are trying to do something. Uh, you give them all this stuff, you mandate them to go to work, but you don't mandate that they get some kind of, you know, into some kind of program. I feel like food stamps and stuff like that, the, the government assistance program, I think, I feel it should be temporary. I feel like, look, government be like, we'll pay for everything, all your needs for two years. Within those two years, you need to go to school and you need to graduate. <clears throat> you need to graduate from a, from a two-year college or you need to learn a trade. Or in two years, we'll re, we won't even bother you for two years. You have you have been for two years. 
we'll check on you every now and then, you know, see how you doing. You know, we might check on you, but you got, you got this stuff for two years. Once those two years is up and you get ready, we do this final evaluation. We put you well, in the front of the parole board or whatever. We're going to look over, see what you've done. And let's say you went to school and you had to, uh, you couldn't finish, but you're still going, you know, you close. Okay. We'll extend it. Maybe another six months or another year, depending on how long it's going to take you to get this. But we're not going to send it too many times. I say you get into a program, you get into a cosmetology program, and but you could, you know, you did start it, didn't have to stop because of some tragedy in the family and start back. So you like six weeks out. Okay, two years up. Okay, we'll extend the benefits for another six months, three months, six months. That'll give you time to get out of school and then get you a job. And then save your little money, work your way up, and then program, then we cut it off. Done. You know, two year college, every now and then people gotta drop classes, or you can't take as many classes as you want it one semester because of whatever's going on. But you ain't gotta work, so but it had to be some kind of family tragedy. Once those two years up, like I say we'll revisit. Let's say you need just maybe two or three more classes. Okay, we'll extend it a few more months. Let you another semester, let you take this class, give you time, or another six months, give you time to take this little some take this class, get your get your trade or get your degree, get out there, we'll help you find a job. I'm talking about we as if we was a government, help you find a job, get a job and you got to become a productive, productive member of society and and program is done. But also, like I said, when you got a single parent raising kids that need programs to put these kids and these and the, and the parents to help that house whole run as smooth as possible. You need counseling programs. You need after school programs for these kids so they can go somewhere and learn something, learn trade, learn STEM, some some learn some. Like say even the parents go to school, do whatever. Uh, but that needs to be implemented and mandated so that way. Like I say, everybody can become a productive member of society and you have no and you can reduce the problems that we have in these communities. Because as long as you don't do that, as long as you leave these people out here just to suffer and you just give them free stuff, free money, free health care. Like I said, you pay, like I said, these grandparents, parents giving these kids these houses and stuff and cost them. Y'all go, you know what I'm saying? Y'all can live in this house and take care of it. I know too many times where they don't take care of nothing that you give them because they ain't done nothing in the first place with their own stuff. Like I said, as long as you're giving people who ain't trying to do that stuff for free they're going to take advantage of it and then once it's gone they're going to be coming back with a handout but you have nothing because you done gave it all to them now you're struggling to keep them alive and they able more able bodied than you are but anyway like I say that's what I don't want to say you know, like I say you know prayers and condolences go out to the family of these kids to these babies man this is the most tragic stuff I've ever seen in my life. Well, I ain't gonna say the most, but gotta be one of them, cause them kids didn't nothing to you. Them kids didn't even probably know who you were. <sighs> Man, but like I said, the, 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 the key is always to find out why people do what they do and find a way to help them out. Like really give them help, not enable them, but to actually help them. Like I said, get them in the program. I mean, there are programs out there a lot of times. It's just about not knowing where to go and not knowing, you know, yeah, not knowing who to talk to. And I understand that. I get that part. But like I said, this is something y'all can talk to y'all uh, government officials, especially coming midterms. Shoot. You know, they're going to talk about this student loan for a while. They're going to they're gonna have to say something about that real soon. You see, they just passed some kind of law. I mean, what is it called? A uh, executive order with the with the George Floyd police mandate, but it's only on a federal level. You know, they try they're gonna try to do something to get get you to vote, especially our people, because a lot of our people said they ain't voting this year. Or if they are, they're gonna vote Republican, and that's kind of throwing them Democrats off. So you just need to keep saying, hey, we need tangibles, not not wolf tickets. We need tangibles and like like I say, some do something to help these single parents, you know, bolster put more money behind programs to help these children. And to help these parents and make people 
like I say, productive members of society, period. But anyway, that's all I got, man. Let me get on out of here. See the sun coming out. Still feel good out here. I'm going to get out here and get some of this sun and enjoy this weather for the rest of the day, man. Like I say, hey, man, y'all like the video, comment, and then share it with the world. And with that being said, I'll leave y'all in peace, and I'll see you on the other side.